November 1903, a revolution begins in the province of Panama. While the Panamanians proclaim their independence, a U.S. warship, the USS Nashville, steams into action in the port of Cologne. The Colombians sent troops via ships to put down the revolt, but the presence of U.S. gun ships prevented all but a handful of Colombian troops from landing, and those who did were bought off. With the Colombians out of the picture, U.S. Marines remain in Panama, protecting American interests. A treaty is drafted, giving Roosevelt the right to administer indefinitely and on both sides of the canal a sovereign strip of U.S. territory. The Panamanians had to accept the treaty. The threat was that if they didn't accept it, they, the United States would withdraw its military and allow the Colombians to recapture the isthmus, and that would have been hanging to many of these Panamanians. So they had to swallow their pride and live by it. And, but for the next 70 years, that treaty was an original sin. Construction of the Panama Canal begins anew in 1904. Roosevelt's great dream takes 10 more years to realize. Opened August 15, 1914, the Panama Canal is hailed as the newest wonder of the modern world. For decades, U.S. interests in the new nation are served without question or issue. In the 1960s, the Panamanian outcry against foreign occupation begins to boil. Citizens take to the streets, demanding the end of Washington's less than subtle influence in Panamanian affairs. It's not until the mid-70s that the call for Panamanian freedom reaches a sympathetic ear. Well, Jimmy Carter is the first post-Vietnam president, and he comes to office with a very progressive international agenda. He wants to end a lot of these rancid relationships with police states. He wants to get rid of colonial vestiges like the Panama Canal. So he sits down with the president of Panama, Omar Torrios, and negotiates this treaty that will basically get rid of the Panama Canal, pass it over to the Panamanians by the year 2000. Panamanians celebrate the news, while the American media explodes with criticism and controversy. It was considered downright reckless to pass control of this vital asset to a country like Panama, which it was commonly assumed would not be able to defend it properly. In the 70s, the United States had tremendous assets in Panama. We had the canal itself. Uh, there were tens of thousands of American troops, maybe 60,000 troops at one time. The bases were in turn training uh, troops from all over Latin America and Central America. It was one of the largest military presence of the United States all over the world.